Now, at some time in your life, you wanted to grow, I know. You know, like little kids, they can hardly wait till they get bigger, right? But at your stage of your life now, you don't want to grow anymore, do you? And you certainly don't want to grow any faster, do you? So you want to decrease the stimulation to growth as much as possible. Now, insulin-like growth factor one has become a very important subject. The dairy industry uses this, this knowledge to promote dairy because they finally have the mechanism to show why consuming dairy products makes stronger bones because it raises insulin-like growth factor one, as we're going to talk about in a minute. But the downside to this is not only does insulin-like growth factor one promote the growth of normal tissues, like bones, but it promotes the growth of abnormal tissues, like cancer. And so in cancer research, insulin-like growth factor one is one of the hottest topics out there. Getting back to some animals who we are helping live longer, so this is good. What they did is they genetically modified these mice so that they didn't produce very much insulin-like growth factor one, and they found these mice would live 40% longer. And they looked younger, and they resisted disease. They described them as having better eyes and joints and brains and immunity than the other mice who didn't have this genetic variation. And so the thing that we know obviously has been substantiated in experimental studies, and that is that less insulin-like growth factor one, less stimulation of growth, causes you to live longer and healthier and look younger. Now, British women who are vegans, who are vegans, they eat an awful lot of soy products, I have to tell you, and a lot of oil in their diet, too, but they don't touch any animal products. Well, they studied 292 British women ages 20 to 70 years old, and they looked at their insulin-like growth factor one levels in their blood. What they found is something very important. Those who were vegans, again, eating plenty of soy and oil in their diet, those who were vegans had 13% lower insulin-like growth factor one levels in their body compared to the 99 that were meat eaters and the 101 that they studied who were lacto-oval vegetarians. And they also did a similar study in men and found men who were vegans had 9% lower IGF-1 levels. So, you know, this is something that's been seen in human populations, is you can change your IGF-1 levels by simply changing your diet. So what are some of the specific things that make a difference in terms of IGF-1 levels? Well, dairy products cause high IGF-1 levels to occur in people. But that makes sense, doesn't it? Because what is the purpose of milk? The purpose of milk is to cause things to grow. That's the ideal food when you are growing, or any animal is growing its most, any mammal grows its most, is when, it, when its ideal food is, is milk, right? So you would expect one of the things for milk to do is to cause insulin-like growth factor one levels to go up. And so it does. Uh, they did two studies, and both of them paid by the dairy industry, because as I told you, the dairy industry uses this to promote and to explain why cow's milk is good for the bones. I mean, they couldn't explain it in terms of calcium. That's just complete nonsense. So they had to come up with an explanation that had some scientific validity, and they've hit on it, is that when you eat dairy, what happens is you increase your growth hormones. As a consequence, the bones grow. Everything grows. And so in the two studies they paid for, one in postmenopausal women and one in adolescent girls, they found that adding about a glass of milk a day increased the insulin-like growth factor one levels in these females' bodies by about 10%. And it is the milk that does it. It's the protein is an important stimulator, but milk is even a more important stimulator of insulin-like growth factor one production. They looked at eight-year-old boys, and they set up a, a test diet where they gave them the same amount of animal protein and what they found when they compared eight ounces of low-fat meat to an equivalent amount of low-fat milk, same amount of protein, that it was the dairy that really caused the rises in the child's insulin-like growth factor one levels by about 19%. So of all the things that you consume, at least that's what I used to believe, of all the things that you consume, dairy products, which is obvious, would be the foods that increase your insulin-like growth factor one levels most. And so if you don't want to promote cancer growth, you don't want to grow older faster, you get dairy out of your diet. And I think most of you have already figured that out, right? Okay. This is going to bother you. In a study recently published, 2003, they took and set up an experiment where with one group of people, what they did is they gave them 40 grams of milk protein, okay. like, you know, skim milk, that kind of thing, 40 grams of milk protein. And they watched what happened to their insulin-like growth factor one levels. And then they took these same subjects and they gave them 40 grams a 
of isolated soy protein. And watch what happened to their insulin like growth factor 1 levels. The results are down at the bottom. Milk concentrate increased insulin like growth factor 1 levels by 36%. But isolated soy protein increased insulin like growth factor 1 levels by 69%, or twice as much. 40 grams of isolated soy protein. How do you get 40 grams of isolated soy protein? Or maybe I should say, is how many of you had 40 grams of isolated soy protein today? Uh, if you eat uh, one chicken soy patty and two soy burgers, you got 40 grams of isolated soy protein in. So you today increased your insulin -like growth factor one levels twice as much as you would if you'd have consumed dairy. If you ate one soy candy bar and a soy shake, you would take in 40 grams of isolated soy protein. And this used to be my killer. I'd do this every morning. Every morning I used to do this. And I knew it wasn't right because I would get my plate out and I would look at the plate and it was full of grease. But they were still tasty, so I kept at it. I used to eat four of these guys every morning, the Morning Star sausages. And not only was it a greasy plate of sausage, but there was 40 grams of isolated soy protein in there, which does a lot of things besides increasing your insulin -like growth factor one level also causes tremendous amount of calcium loss and many other negative effects on the body. So I, I know there are at least a couple people in this room who need to rethink this about your diet. You re need to rethink the soy, soy protein, particularly isolated soy proteins in your diet. It was a long transition for me and fortunately I have the knowledge now and I realize this is a very important step and I hope that you get this figured out too because so many of the positive changes you've made have been really good for you, but this is an important step you need to take. Those of you who are thinking about a change of diet, you've probably been confronted with the idea of eating more soy. And, you know, that's probably a, a deal stopper for many of you. You think, oh, I don't want to eat soy. I don't like soybeans. I hate tofu. That's okay. You don't need to eat tofu or soybeans or any soy product in your diet. It's not necessary. You don't need the protein. You don't need any other nutrients from soy. Just forget it, leave it out, and instead just eat the kind of diet that I recommend, which is a diet centered around starches, the addition of fruits and vegetables. Starches, you know, corn, potatoes, rice, those kinds of things. Don't bother with soy. Oh, you want to know about the soy deal. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about soy. And you can read about this, by the way, if you go to my April 2005 newsletter, I discuss soy products. First of all, we do include some soy products in our diet. Maybe 10% of the dishes that you'll find on our website and on our books has some soy in it. Uh, it uses, those soy products are traditional soy products, like uh, soybeans, edamame, uh, tofu, miso, uh, tempeh. Uh, those are traditional foods that have been eaten for 5,000 years in Asian countries. Things that are fixed in the kitchen or the laundry room. They require hardly any processing, a little grinding, filtering, precipitation, uh, fermentation. That, that's all. They're real simple things to be done. Those you can include in your diet. Traditional, let me say that again, traditional soy products are fine. Maybe, you know, a couple ounces a day would be reasonable for people to include. Adds a little bit of interest. The soy I want you to stay away from is the, the fake food. That's right. The the soy burgers, the soy cheeses, the soy chicken McNuggets, the soy, you know, all this soy garbage that you find in the supermarkets. This is made of isolated soy protein, uh, some isolated wheat protein, some sugars and refined starches, and they throw some dairy and eggs in it, and they, and they mix it up in a bowl, and they treat it with high pressure and high temperature, and turn it into things that look like what you used to eat. Sure, it's easy to become a vegan, or vegetarian if you make no change at all. If you switch, switch from the, the bloody cow-based hamburger to a soy-based hamburger, overnight you become a vegetarian, but you're not much healthier. Stay away from these fake foods. Include a little soy if you want in your diet, but traditional soy products. You guys like bacon? Light life, smart bacon. Bacon made from soy. This company, Light Life, also makes smoky tempeh bacon. Now, tempeh is a fermented version of soy, so it tastes a little different than the other stuff, but keep in mind, I would not recommend products to you if they didn't taste fantastic. I am trying to win you over, so you go veg. I'm not showing you every product we have. Some of our products suck. I'm showing you the best of the best. And when I say some of our products suck, 
Don't act like there aren't shitty Chinese restaurants, nasty pizza places, and disgusting hamburger joints, okay? It works both ways. If it's made great, no matter what it is, it tastes great. If not, it's going to stink. Light Life also has soy chicken strips and steak strips as well. They also have a full line of deli meats. Turkey, bologna, and ham. You cannot tell the difference by sight, taste, or texture. Small company called Melissa's has chorizo, vegan chorizo. Energy bars, like Cliff Bars, Luna Bars, and a new bar just came out called Pro Bar. Might not have seen that one yet. They're all vegan, and many other companies have a vegan energy bar as well. Now remember, when you go veg, you don't give up anything. You got the vegan version of stuff, or eat things that are truly natural, like fruits and vegetables, or beans and lentils. You like turkey? We got you covered. My favorite product, tofurkey. <laughs> Tofu turkey, stuffing on the inside. Look, smells, and tastes like turkey. Gotta slice it with a knife. But guess what? No turkey had to suffer and die for this.